Doppelganger. I remember visiting you on set, uh, for the, not on set, but in the production offices for this one. And uh, I talking about nightmares and the, the things that frighten us, like to our core, the things that um, influence us when we are young. And you took a lot of the, the imagery uh, that, you know, really pulled at you when you were a younger person and, and put it into this very effective show. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, the, 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 the episode where everybody has to face their greatest fears is a bit of a sci-fi trope, yeah. you know, it's been done a lot. Um, so I guess, you know, you, you have that argument in the, in the writer's room about, are we going to go there? Are we going to do this? And, and then, it becomes, well, you know, if we did this, what would it look like? What would those elements be? Um, and then you sort of, based on that, decide whether it's going to, you know, it's worth it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think the, you know, beyond the everybody's greatest fear um, element of it, the thing that's sort of stuck out for me in that episode was was that the way um it was the it was the sort of the shepherd mckay relationship mm. beats were really uh worth exploring mm -hmm. you know that was something that i felt was fun to sort of play with do you hate clowns robert <laughs> Who doesn't hate clowns? <laughs> I I grew up with 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 uh, Steve, with uh, uh, Curry's interpretation of of Pennywise, so I definitely am not a big fan. <laughs> uh, reading that book was was pretty yeah. formative for me. I mean, I didn't I didn't you know I wasn't so much into horror movies, but I actually read quite a bit of Stephen King when I was younger. And, yeah, and, it, uh, it is terrifying. I read it years later, and it was twelve hundred pages of just mayhem. But, you know, and, and the the idea of being buried alive, you know, which I think is the only when I watch that episode, it's, it's the only scene that I wish, you know, I wish that hole was deeper because I think it would have made it more intense. Um, but uh, the imagery, I was like, I was, you know what, it's, it's like these things, uh, you, you say that it's a fair statement, the things that you have to deal with as a producer. Mm. Finding a place in Vancouver where you can shoot that looks like it's the wilderness and that you can dig a hole <laughs> is virtually impossible. Really? Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Like you're not allowed to dig in a lot of these places. There was a, there was a, um, one time when we were shooting, uh, uh, and it was right near the lake. So I think it may have been actually that episode now that you bring it up. Um, that lake where, where, uh, McKay is rowing the boat out. Yes. Uh, and we were shooting in, 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 and around the forest, uh, married to that sequence. And you, you literally could not walk off the path. Like you, you know, if someone stepped on, on a plant that was off the beaten path, it was like alarms would go off and, yeah. the, and the rangers would come and, yeah. and take you away. Um, so finding a place where you could actually dig and not like in a lot of cases on, on, on other episodes as well, we would have to fake the hole. So we would build, we could put a mound of dirt, right? but we couldn't actually dig down into, it was very rare that you could find a location where you could bring in a, a digger and actually make a hole. Could, I wonder if you could have pulled it off at a, at a, a cemetery. That would have been creepy. Yeah, hard to get a permit. Okay, that's a fair point. All right, very good. Yeah, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of things that you know. You you type on the page uh, as the writer, and you go, "Well, this is not no big deal." And then you, right. you know, you get to the rubber hits the road, and it's like, "Huh, it's a much bigger deal than I thought it was." Gonna be. I'm being thwarted by a hole in the ground. All right, <laughs> exactly. very good. Did you get any pushback from the network here or in, in any other circumstance while I've raised the question 
Uh, 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 Iratus bug coming out of Taylor's stomach. Blood. Mm, you may want to dial that back a little bit. My jaw hit the floor when I saw that scene. I was like, oh man, they went there. Guts and all. Yeah. Well, uh, I don't know. I don't, nobody ever said anything about that. I mean, if it had been a real, like a real operation or a real thing, I think we would have got pushback. But oh, because like not in a dream. Yeah. Well, or even the fact that it's an alien, like, yeah. like the, the fact that it's not real, yeah. um, get, gave you a, gives a, gave us a lot of license at, uh, at times. So, you know, blood wasn't really a problem if it was like alien blood, you know, okay. uh, or human blood, but in you know, with a, with an alien, you know, okay. involved. So, so no, no one ever, no one ever objected to that really. Uh, uh, and I'm sure you noticed, uh, the, um, you know, the vertigo shot that, that was the only, like my, obviously I've told the story that, you know, Jaws was, uh, even though it's oh, yeah. a whale, it's a whale in, in, uh, in doppelganger, uh, I still wanted to nod to Jaws. And so there's a, the push in on, um, on Jewel, uh, is the, uh, you know, the, the, the zoom uh, dolly, which is uh, known as the vertigo shot, but is also in, you know, fairly famously in Jaws. Yes, the I remember you talking about uh, how how Jaws had been uh, hugely impactful for you as a child. I mean, you wouldn't go into like the water or something at a certain point after seeing this film. I'm going in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> there be sharks in there. And you know, you think that's you think that's. Silly. No, I don't, my friend. Seen, I'm laughing out of Thunderball? frustration. Have you, ever seen, have you ever seen Thunderball? I mean, I only needed to see like a like a couple of frames of that, and I was like, all right, that's it. Pools are out. Now yeah. you're talking to someone who should have gone into major psychotherapy after being eight years old, and for whatever reason, when you're really sick, your immune system is down. Things affect you differently. Watching the nuclear apocalypse scene in Terminator Two and have it completely rewiring your brain for like two years. So believe yeah. me, I get it. You know, there you have to exercise those demons however you can, and even as an adult, getting to do that on your show has got to be just fascinating to go through. So, yeah. And using Joe Flanagan's Shepherd as a lens to kind of do that and calling back to a, a cousin species from season one of SG-1, the Crystals, it was great. You made it happen. Thank you. Thanks for watching this clip from Dial the Gate. You can find the full live stream shows on our YouTube channel or visit dialthegate.com for the complete schedule. See you on the other side.